I'm Joshua Johnson. I'm a drummer. I'm the musical director for Tank and the Bangers. I get to write and do all this other stuff, but mostly I get to play a lot of drums. I grew up in a church, so a lot of my musical influence came from there. And my older brother, who plays a lot of keys and stuff like that, early on, we used to just make a lot of noise. And my moms would be like, uh, I don't know what they want to do, right? So she put us both in the piano lessons, like at three years old. It was like, I think Joe took to it, and he started playing stuff, and I was just beating on the keys. So they kind of figured out, they were like, try the drums. They put me on some drums, man. And I kind of broke them, having fun. So then they bought me another kit, and I broke that one. <laughs> I lived in New Orleans. I ended up at this open mic night um, in Algiers called the Black Star Cafe. It was, it was um, something that happened on Sunday nights, man. And they'll be doing poetry and just like really talking on, on, on a higher level with some real cool stuff. And they didn't have a drummer and they didn't have a keyboard player. And you know, uh, one day me and my partner ended up playing over there. And uh, I didn't know him at the time. He was really this cool dude on keys named Norman. And uh, he ended up playing there. I ended up playing there. We kind of uh, did a thing. It, it happened for a few weeks. We ended up uh, in this band called the Black Star Bangers. We met Tank the same night. She was doing poetry and stuff like that, man. She wanted a band too. She didn't know we needed a singer. <laughs> so, I mean, everything kind of worked out. Life did a lot of twists and turns, and we ended up with this band called Tank and the Bangers, this amazing two-time Grammy-nominated thing that we have right here, this amazing spectacle of, of musicianship and artistry and, and just outright madness sometimes. Tank and the Bangers is all these things because it's so many different people from so many different walks of life, honestly. Like, I grew up in the church and I listened to a whole lot of church music up until I got into the band. That's when I was able to kind of listen to a little bit more, you know, secular music. But before that, my parents were really strict on it. So it was like a whole, every aspect of church, I, I listened to it, you know what I mean? Anything. And I was trying to soak up all kind of music at the time. So for me, it was like every aspect of that I was into. And then outside of that, I was listening to soundtracks and stuff like that. So I was listening to like Danny Elfman and Hans Zimmer and John Williams, like for real, for real, just like soaking that up. I wake up early in the morning, hot from global warming. Where she's I find that it finds its way into our music as well. But then I got cats like Norman who listened to like Dilla, Bilal, and, and Robert Glasper, and you find those elements in there. My little brother who plays bass listening to Derek Hodge, Paladino, and stuff like that, man. It's crazy. So we got a whole lot of different vibes in there, and then Tank with her poetry and her madness, her creativity, man. She can pull words out of thin air, bro, and just make you cry. <laughs> or make you smile. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you put all that together, I'm pretty sure it's like a crazy experience to tame, but man, it's something to see, you know? We were on this tour in Europe and it was my backline kit. It was a, like an absolute maple kit that they had for us. And it was the one I had to use all tour and I had never used it before. And when I tell you these drums sang from the very first show to the last show, it was the most amazing experience for me to play with. It was just like every time had its own voice, right? And then if it if it started to dial back a little, I could just tweak it a little and it'd come right back. And it was like that. And I'm telling you, it was a lot of shows, man. Like six weeks worth of shows. And that kid like held it down. It, it held it down. It was like, wow. I had played Yamaha kits before, but I think that moment I wasn't like playing against a kit, it was like playing with me, you know what I mean? Cause some kits, you can like force it and you can feel it like fighting you back. It's like, oh, it's gonna be work today. But but this one, it was so melodic and just so in tune with what I was trying to do, especially in the moments it just kind of flowed out. You my oak tree, you my misbelief, you my collard green, you the song I sing. It was euphoric really. You know what I mean? And after that, I kind of call out managers like, look, take everything else off the back line. Just make sure it's this. Yeah, because if it wasn't that, it was really like, oh man, this is going to be a tough time. 